Well, let's start with a basic example of grid layout and its interface. So, as you can see here, I have an element that I'm going to play with it now, but first I'm going to create a board and I'm going to apply grid layout. As you can see here on the right, I have the layout area, so now I can choose between grid layout and flex layout. So, the first change that we are going to notice are the grid lines that are applied, okay? So now you can differentiate between columns and rows and the intersection between them is called cell. Okay, so we will, uh, right here, if I double click, I can enter the grid edit mode. As I mentioned before, grid layout talks about having elements on a board, not the content itself. This is not the content, okay? But we will add it now. Here on the on the right, we have some options available. Once we have chosen to activate display grid, as you can see, apart from the directions in which elements will be distributed, we also have now uh, that they will behave inside the cells and in turn this set of cells. So how it will behave inside the board, okay? So let's see it quickly. I'm going to enter in edit mode and I'm going to add columns and rows here and there so now i have a three side grid as you can see this is an fr unit uh, that is by default in grid layout it talks about portions or fractions okay this means that the width of my board is divided into three equal fractions and the height the same if i modify this the size you see that it scales automatically because being a fraction it's modified alone. It is not a fixed measurement, okay? We can make it fixed if we want, but now we're going to see it better with content. If I add an element inside, for example, here in the, or in the first cell, I can change its size and behavior inside it. As you can see, I guess the content has its own characteristics and properties independent of the grid. I can move it to the position I want. Uh, here, as you can see, uh, it is positioned up on left by default. But if I handle this behavior uh, from having the selection here on the grid, I choose that they are, for example, center. Now it's position center. These two options talk about how they align within their cell. What does direction mean? So if I duplicate this element, having chosen on the board, that the direction is horizontal, the elements are going to duplicate horizontally. They are going to occupy the next cell that is free, as you can see. So if I change this direction to, to vertical, to, to column, <clears throat> and I duplicate the element, it goes below. It is the automatic way to have the elements within our grid. Once they are created, uh, if I modify this, the direction does not affect uh, because it is the way uh, in the order when the new elements are added, not the existing ones. So the existing ones are already positioned. That is the first big difference with flex. In such a way, if I have arranged the element of column, but now I change it again to, to row and duplicate, uh, it changed so only for the new elements well let's play uh, a little more with this as i told you here we have the fraction units but i can give them a specific pixels i can select here an input and write 200 pixels or you can see or i can readjust by hand i'm going to make here and there some quick changes by hand as you can see as soon as i make the modification they change to pixels okay well um you can see the positioning of the resulting cells is now on the top left if i select my board i can change this behavior here i can tell them to be center and see if they have okay just center on my board this is what this kind of alignment talks about. It controls the positioning of the rows and columns within the board, the space that you are giving it, okay? By default, they recommend using automatic units or fractions so that they occupy the total and you have, you know, uh, greater control. 
uh, but well, you know, we are going to duplicate elements, so that degree this field, and you can see how it effectively change the arrangement of the elements. Okay. I can also control in the edit mode the space and the inner edge that my grid has. For example, I'm going to give it a visible 30 and separation between cells of 30 on both sides. And I can also tell it that my board, uh, as we did in, in Flex, so it's flexible and adapts to the content. As you can see right now, the behavior is that I'm going to tell it to be a stretch, so it's center all my cells. Uh, okay, there we have it. I can also tell all these elements that occupy the 100% both in height and width of their cell, uh, with which now I do have a grid that is totally responsive. Okay, more more things. Yes. Uh, in the edit mode, when I select uh, once, you see that I'm editing the grid. Okay, when I'm in the edit mode, what I'm editing the grid, as you see that I'm selecting with these pink tones, uh, I can, uh, you know, the, the arrangement of the elements, we are talking about the space, not the elements inside, the elements, as you can see, are selected with the classic green, okay? It's easy to, to differentiate. You also have uh, the message visually here. If I select all the cell, I can tell it to occupy certain space right now the cell starts in one column and ends in the in the column two and also starting one and row two and if I select the second it is row two three for the first row and three four if I remove these elements and in the edit mode I choose the cell okay I can create an area uh, so what is an area? An area is a group of cells which I can choose where it is starts and where it ends. It does not only have to be the intersection of a row with a column. For example, I can choose that my cell occupies the space of 4. As I have this image that occupies 100% of the value of space, it has just adapted. In this way, we can create super powerful layouts very easy. For example, I select this cell and choose this one. It has already created two different areas. In the edit mode, you can see it here if I select the cell. Here I have the manual layout. What is the difference between, the, between manual and area? It's the same like a manual, but you can give it a name. For example, here I'm going to write like highlight. As you can see, it is Mac up here. This area I can change and put it a very easy way to name areas such as my sidebar, my main content, etc. Mm -hmm.